Okay, so it says explore. Use centimeter cubes to make the figure shown. So they've made figure one, figure two, and figure three there for us. Now I want to know how many centimeter cubes are used in each figure. So first we're looking at figure one. How many cubes are there? Four. There are four cubes. Okay. What about in figure two? How many cubes there? Eight. Eight. Figure three. Four. Okay, so... We kind of got a pattern going on there. So what pattern do you see and describe it in words? So each new figure has four more cubes. Very good. So you see as we get from four to eight, we added four. And then to get from eight to 12, we added four again. So we're adding four each time. Now suppose this pattern continues. Copy and complete the table to find the number of cubes needed to find each figure. So we see here, the top row is the number, it's what figure number we're on. So this is the first figure, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And then how many cubes do we need for each one? So they've kind of helped us get started. Figure one needs four cubes. Figure two needs eight. Figure three needs 12. Figure four, how many cubes will we need there? And how did you find that number? Add four, right? Just continue the pattern. The fifth figure has? 20. The sixth figure? The seventh figure? The eighth figure? Okay, simple enough. Now what about the tenth figure? How many would it need? 40 cubes. So how did you get 40? Ooh. You did what? Four times ten. Four times 10. Okay, did anybody keep adding? So the ninth one would need 36, the tenth one would need 40. Right, you could have added and filled those in. Or, that's what we wanted to notice is, whatever figure number we are on, we are multiplying it by four. So what about the 100th figure? It would be 400 cubes to get there, right? We get that pattern going on. You just added to get to 10? Oh, you added to get to 100. Oh, very impressive. Okay, so today we're going to look at sequences. So a sequence is an ordered list of numbers. So it's very important. The numbers listed have to be in order. Each number in a sequence is called a term. So we call this my first term, second term, third term, and so on, right? Each position is a term. In and... Do you know what that word is? Ooh. Yes and no at the same time. How about that? This word is arithmetic, but you pronounce it differently depending on what part of speech it is. Have you all learned about parts of speech? Okay. So what, what part of speech is it now? It's describing what kind of sequence it is. So it's an adjective. So when you have an adjective, you don't say arithmetic, you say arithmetic. Okay, so this is called an arithmetic sequence. It means the exact same thing as arithmetic, it's the exact same word. But arithmetic for a noun, arithmetic for an adjective. Just interesting. Okay, so anyways, in an arithmetic sequence, each term is found by adding the same number to the previous term. So that's what we just had a second ago, where we were adding four, adding four, adding four. Because we were adding the same thing every time, that makes it an arithmetic sequence. An example of an arithmetic sequence is shown below. So 8, 11, 14, 17, 20. And we can find the next term each time by adding three, because we're going up three every time. So that makes this an arithmetic sequence. Okay, here's our first example problem. It tells me to describe the relationship between the terms in the arithmetic sequence. 8, 13, 18, 23. Then write out the next three terms in the sequence. So I'm going to write down these numbers in the sequence. 8, 13, 18, and 23. And then since I've got to find the next three terms, I'm going to go ahead and write in three blanks. That way I'm sure I get them all. So I've got to figure out what the pattern is, right? It's an arithmetic sequence. 
That tells me something is being added over and over and over. So how could I get from 8 to 13 what is being added? Okay, so let's see if that holds true in every position. So to get to 13 to 18, can we add 5? Yes. From 18 to 23, can we add 5? Yes. yes, so that is the correct pattern that is going on. So to get from 23 to the next one, I'm going to add 5. So 23 plus 5 is 28. And then to get to the next number in the sequence, the next item, I'm going to add 5 to get 33. And then to find the seventh term, I'm going to add 5. <coughs> and that gives me 38. So now I have found the pattern, adding 5. And I have found the next three terms in the sequence. Okay, you're going to try these two. <coughs> and I'm going to call them one of you at random to give your answers. Let's look at one that's maybe a little bit more difficult that adds decimals into the mix. It says, describe the relationship between the terms in the arithmetic sequence. Four tenths, six tenths, eight tenths, and one. Then write the next three terms in the sequence. So I'm going to do just like I did before. I'm going to write down this pattern. Okay, so what is being added every time? We're adding 0 0.2, right, every time. And what if you had a little bit harder one that was harder to tell what's being added every time? Well, you can just pick any two terms and subtract them, right? It's like if I picked 1 minus 0.8 then you can find the correct thing that's being added, right? So point two is pretty easy to see, but you may have an example a little later that's a little bit more challenging. So just remember, you can always subtract to find what is it that's being added every time. So I want to continue this pattern. So if I add point two to one, that's going to give me 
1.2. And then if I add 0 0.2 to 1.2, I get 1.4. And then add 0 0.2 to 1.4 to get 1.6.
Okay, so let's read here a little bit. In a sequence, each term has a specific position within the sequence. Consider the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 2 is in the first position. 4 is in the second. 6 is in the third. 8 is in the fourth. 10 is in the fifth position, and so on. But that's not too complicated. Now, the table below shows the position of each term in the sequence. Notice that the position increases by 1, the value of the term increases by 2. Okay, so we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, right? When we were looking at the 10th position in the sequence, y'all told me you multiplied by 4, right, to get to 40. Then I said, well, in the 100th position, you would multiply 100 by 4. So that's what they're letting us see here, is that in this we're adding 2 every time, but we could think about it as being multiplied. 2 times 2, 3 times 2, 4 times 2, and 5 times 2. Okay, we can also write an algebraic expression. So what is that? Algebraic means numbers and variables. Expression. What's an expression? Here we go. Yes. Boom. It's sticking with you. So that represents the relationship between any term in a sequence and its position in the sequence. In this case, if n represents the position of the sequence, then the value of the term is 2n. Right, so if we were looking for the first position, we'd multiply 2 times 1. The third position, 2 times 3. The fourth position, 2 times 4. The nth position would be 2 times n for whatever position we're looking for. So looking here, it says the only greeting cards that Meredith made are sold in boxes at a local gift store. Each week, the store sells five more boxes. So week one, they sold five. Week two, they sold ten. Week three, fifteen. If this pattern continues, what algebraic expression can be used to help her find the total number of boxes sold at the end of the 100th week, then express the expression, sorry, then use the expression to find the total. So what what is the expression that is happening every time? So to go from 5 to 10 to 15, right, we could keep adding 5. But we want to kind of shortcut it if we can. So if we're looking at the 100th week, what could we do? We could take how many boxes are being added every week? And multiply it by 100, what week we're looking for. So 5 times 100 tells me they're going to have 500 greeting cards on the 100th week. Okay, I like...